All right, y'all, like the title suggests, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to overclock the iGPU or the integrated graphics on the Ryzen 5 5600G here on the Gigabyte B550MDS3H motherboard. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you what I was able to get out of mine and also what kind of results you can get by overclocking the iGPU on these things. So let me flip you over here and we'll get into getting this done for you. All right, guys, like I said in the intro and it's in the title, I'm gonna show you how to overclock that iGPU or the uh, integrated graphics here on the Ryzen 5 5600G. We'll also see what kind of performance gains we can get out of it. But let's jump into the BIOS here and I'll show you how to get that iGPU uh, overclocked. Go down your windows, go to your power, go to restart, and talk, start tapping your delete key. BIOS has been reset. Please reconfigure your BIOS setup items if needed. All right, we will do that. We got to reset up everything. Okay, then we're going to go to advanced mode. Okay, right down here, we got the GFX clock frequency. We need to change that. There you go over here, you double click on the auto. Right down here, it tells you specifies the clock frequency value in megahertz for the GFX core to support overclocking. The Ryzen 5 5600G out of the box is set at 1900 megahertz. And what you gotta say, 2300 megahertz? Type in 2300 and hit the key. And you can also up the voltage that it will send to get your iGPU. Seen any of my other videos, I like going with a 1.35. That's pretty safe around about. So we changed the frequency now up to 2300 and it's at 1.35 volts. Hit save and exit, save and exit. Okay, and down here it tells you everything you changed. With my, on the integrated graphics, we had set it back up, so we changed it to forces. UMA mode, we changed it to UMA specified. The UMA frame buffer size, we took it up to two gigs. GFS core frequency, we went from auto up to 2300 megahertz. The GFX core voltage, we went from auto to 1.35 volts. You hit yes, and let the system reboot, and it should put you back into Windows. All right, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna right click, go up to task manager, go to performance, go to GPU. You can see right there, we do have two gigabytes of dedicated memory. And just like in dedicating more RAM to your iGPU or, AG, or APU, it also takes away from your system memory. We have 16, gig, 16 gigs installed, but now we're down to only 14 gigs usable. Something to keep in mind, which if you're building an APU system, I'm, I hope you already realize that. But this don't tell you what kind of speed you're getting out of it. Don't tell you what it what it's what it's rated for. So we're going to do MSI afterburner here, which will show us what speed it's running at. And you can see right here it is running at 2300 megahertz. So we do have two gigs dedicated to the VRAM, and we also have 2300 megahertz speeds. I just want to run uh, having benchmark here for a little bit, just to make sure that it is a stable overclock and they're gonna be crashing when I do my benchmarks. So let me run this for a while, make sure it's stable. I may actually go in and up at some if I think it can handle more than this. So I'll be I'll be back. All right, all. We ran at 2300, and it went with no problems. Max temperature I was seeing was towards the end of it. Uh, it was only reading about 70 degrees Celsius. So I think we have some more room in the CPU. So let's go back in here, and we'll go back into the BIOS, and uh, we'll see if we can push it a little bit further. All right, here we are back in the BIOS, and it took us straight to the tweaker page this time. Apparently, they knew what we was wanting to do. Um, so uh, under the GFX clock frequency. We got 2300 megahertz right now. Let's go up to 2600 megahertz. Let's see if that's gonna be stable. Everything else is staying the same. We're just up in that uh, G, uh, GFX clock frequency. And it should be just back into Windows. All right, guys, it looks like we ran into an issue. So apparently uh, we ain't gonna be able to get 2600 megahertz out of it. So uh, let me reset the BIOS and uh, I'll be back. All right, guys, since I cleared my C CMOS, it says BIOS has been reset. Please reconfigure the Google BIOS. 2600 megahertz wasn't stable. So we'll go with uh, 2400, because 2300 was stable. 2600 was a little much. We'll change this back up to 1.35 volts, just like we had. Hit enter. We're gonna hit save and exit. Save and exit setup. And again, it's gonna show us everything we did. 
So we changed the integrated graphics, changed the UMA mode. We also changed the frame buffer size. We changed this GFX clock frequency up to 2400 megahertz, and we changed the voltage to 1.35 volts. See what that does. Let's see if it's stable at 2400 megahertz. Make sure we have the two gigs of uh, RAM that we put in there. Two gigs of dedicated VRAM. Okay, that did hold. Okay, uh, MSI Afterburner. Uh, it's pushing 2400 megahertz. So we'll go ahead and run uh, Heaven. Just like last time, you know, usually if you can run Heaven benchmark all the way through one benchmark session, you're usually pretty stable. Not always, but usually you're pretty good. But we'll see, uh, we'll run heaven here and see if it's stable enough to run heaven, which I believe it will be. All right, all 2400 megahertz. It did run it all the way through. But as you can tell by looking at the screen here, I'll put this part in the video. You can see the artifacting of it, which that ain't a good thing. You don't want that artifacting. So I don't think we're gonna be able to run at 2400 megahertz. I'm gonna go down here, hit the Windows button, up to the power button, up to the restart button, and back to the BIOS we go by tapping the delete key. All right, here we are. It took us right back into the speaker where we left off at. The GFX core frequency says 2400 megahertz. We're gonna drop that back down to the 2300. Like I showed you, 2400 did finish having benchmark, but there was a lot of artifacting. So we're gonna double click on that. We're gonna type in 2300. We're gonna hit the enter button. Make sure that megahertz symbol shows up there. We're gonna save and exit. We're gonna save and exit. And it's gonna tell you what you changed. We went from 2400 back down to 2300. And we're gonna hit yes. And it should be back into Windows. Here we are back in the windows. We're gonna right click, go to Tax Manager. Make sure it didn't change. I just wanna do this just to be on the safe side. Looks like we still have two gigs of dedicated memory there. That's what we's wanting. We're gonna fire up MSI Afterburner here. Hit yes. And as you can see, our clock speeds are back down to 2300. Uh, let me go ahead and run the rest of these benchmarks. And uh, just like I did with the stock settings, but with two gigs enabled, that's what we're gonna be comparing to today. So let me go ahead and run the rest of the benchmarks and uh, I'll come up with a conclusion to the video for you. All right, all, and that's the way you get the integrated graphics on the Ryzen 5 5600G overclocked on the big gigabyte B550 MDS3H motherboard. As I showed you in the video, 2400 megahertz, it did run having benchmark, but there was a lot of artifacting in it, so I did cut it back to 2300. Because of that artifacting, I'm gonna say 2300 megahertz was about the best that I could get out of this particular 5600G. But what kind of performance change did we get? Well, I upped my game a little bit this week, guys. I actually got some charts for you instead of just a notepad layout like I used in the benchmarking video. So I hope you enjoyed this, because it took me a while to learn it. So let's flip you over here and we'll look at the look at these charts we got and see what kind of performance game we got. All right guys, here we're looking at having benchmark. It wasn't running a 1080p. It was in Windows mode, so it wasn't quite 1080. It wasn't quite 1920 wide, but you know, it was still a 1080p. Uh, the black lines, or the overclocked, the orange lines is the 1900 megahertz with the two gigabyte dedicated VRAM. The OC, we went from, with the average, we went up to 38.7 from 35.2. The minimums went up from up to 24.8 from 22.9. The max is 83.7, that's up from 73.9. 1% lows is 25.1, that's up from 22.9. 1% low is up from up to 21 from 21.7. So we've seen a little bit of a decent bump up here in heaven. All right, all here we are with Fortnite. It was in 1080p, low settings, with the field distance set at very high, or as high as I can get it, because that's the way it seems like everybody likes playing this game. We got the average, it's up to 210.5 from 207.5. The minimum is 97.8, that's up from 82.5. The max is 301, which is down from 425. 
1% low is up to 106.7 from 53.7. The one tenth percent low is 24.7, which is up from 22.4. Now, I don't know how to explain the differences in the maxes. The only thing I can figure out is because of the way, of course, when you're playing real gameplay like that, it's hard to get everything just right. So maybe that was doing a map load or something like that, pop that maximum all the way up. This shows that differences. That's the only way I can explain that differences in the maxes. CSGO is our next victim. That was ran at 1080p on high settings. We were at 94.1 average. That's up from 90.6. The minimum is down a little bit from 56.6. And with two gigs of 1900 megahertz, that was at 56.8. The max is about the same, 369.8, 369.8, 1 percent lows. Went down a little bit, 60.2. 1% low is 61.3. 1 tenth percent low was 51.8, which was up a little bit from 51.1. And again, that was on a live gameplay. So it's kind of hard to make sure everything is exactly the same on each gameplay. Borderlands 3, this was the ben built in benchmark at 720p with a mixture of low and medium settings. The OC is average is 65.5, which is up from 60.7. The minimum is up from 54.6 from 51.4. The max is up to 79 from 76.3. 1% low is up 51.9 from 50.4. 1% low actually a little bit less is 4.6 where it was 7.4. And that's another one of, them, one of them other strange things that I really can't explain, but that's the numbers I ended up with. Apex Legends, that was played at 720p low with uh, field of view all the way out. And I figured that's the way a lot of people play that game, I'm assuming, I don't know. Maybe you leave it in the comments and let me know how most people play, play Apex Legends. But, you know, it is a first person shooter and they play competitive. I figured that was competitive settings for it, just like Fortnite. But what kind of what kind of uptick did we have on it? Uh, the average is up from 59.5 5, from 59.3. The minimum went up from 49.7 to 38.3. The max is up 61.2 from 60.2. 1% low is 59.3, which is up from 50. The 1 tenth percent low is 58.8, and that's up from 45.6. All right, guys, and that's the numbers I ended up with. I think it did a little bit better in some of these games. It depends on the title that you're playing, if the GPU bound or CPU bound. But while I was playing any of these games, the CPU was barely being utilized. So I don't think the CPU por portion of the CPU was actually holding any of these games back. As far as Fortnite goes, Apex Legends goes, and CSGO, you've seen some differences in the frame rates, which don't really make sense when you're overclocking compared to standard. You're looking at 2300 megahertz, 1900 megahertz but this is because of the maps and the way stuff happens in the maps you know it's hard to do an actual step by step or a straight comparison when you're playing actual gameplay like that because you really don't have much control over what's happening on the screen and it all also may have been because of when i started uh, started the benchmark or the time that i ended the benchmark you know it may have been in the middle of the map it may have been in the middle of loading a split screen or something to kick them averages or the maximums up higher than where it should have been. Is it really worth overclocking the IGPUs on these things? And when you're overclocking these things, you do see quite a bit of benefit from it. Even in some of the titles that I tested here, there wasn't a whole lot in the average, or maybe not as much in the max, but it did smooth out the gameplay. You know, your 1% lows and your 1% lows is what shows that, how smooth that gameplay is gonna be. And while I was looking at the timings, frame timings while I was playing these games, there wasn't as many spikes and dips in the time frame, which means it's a smoother experience for you. And like I showed you in the video, it only takes a few minutes to go in here and make a few settings. And I also showed you in the video that I tried 2600 megahertz, which I had to reset the BIOS. I tried 2400 megahertz, and with heaven, we had a bunch of artifacting. You know, and that's the fun of overclocking, to see what you could actually push these components to. Am I saying this is what you can get out of your 5600G? No. Your 5600G may overclock better than what mine does. It may not clock as well as what mine does. It just all depends on the silicon lottery. If you like this kind of content, go down and give me a like. If not, there's that dislike button. There's also a comment section below. 
I go through them every weekend here on my live stream, Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. While you're down there, don't forget that lonely little subscribe button, that notification bell, where you're notified next time I put out a video, I go live here on YouTube. Also, there's links in the description for Instagram and Twitter. I won't kill your inbox, but I do put up photos of new stuff I have coming in to give you an idea of what's coming up on the channel. If there's any information about my live stream, if I got to cancel or change the time, that's where you also get that information. With all that being said, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.